Welcome to uh, Biology, Biodiversity, and Life, our first lecture. Uh, I'd like to start with this particular picture just to give us a little perspective. This is where Earth fits into our particular uh, part of the universe, uh, out sort of in one of the arms of our galaxies. So we're going to focus just on our planet and all the complexities, but I sort of like to start out with this uh, bigger worldview or perspective. So in this course we're studying biology, and I think everyone basically knows what biology is, but we want to introduce uh, some basic concepts today. Um, life, uh, bio just means life, and ology means the study of. So biology is the study of life in all its forms, and all the different uh, complexities that go into having functional living organisms. So important question in biology is how many different kinds of organisms are there on the planet? And the short answer is we don't know. Um, probably somewhere between 10 and 100 million different species on planet Earth. Uh, if you're writing that number down, you might be scratching your head and thinking, wow, that's a really huge range. And it is. Um, about 30 years ago, the answer would have been about 10 million species. Uh, however, uh, a researcher was doing some work in the rainforest he was misting insecticide up into rainforest canopy and uh, for the next couple hours dead insects would rain down from a particular tree onto some plastic and graduate students would pick each one up and count and classify and what they found is 1200 new species under just one tree and that was interesting, but then he went to the next tree uh, on the trail and did the same thing and found almost 1,200 new species. And he repeated this for about 20 different species of tree and found at least 1,000 new species of insect under each one, living in each one. And this is where if you extrapolate that kind of number out, you get to there could be a diversity as high as 100 million species on the planet. There are only about 2 million species that are described, and described means they actually have a scientific name, and um, there is a specimen in a museum somewhere that describes that particular species. The birds and the mammals are probably the best described species, meaning we have scientific names for almost all of them. Um, and that's because they're what we call charismatic megafauna. Um, charismatic means things you're attracted to that are interesting. Mega means big and fauna means animals. So these are the big charismatic animals. Imagine things that there's posters of and calendars of. We've described those pretty well. But even that said, uh, we're still discovering new species of birds and mammals uh, on the planet. The poorly studied species are the ones that aren't quite as glamorous. So imagine going home and saying, hey mom, I'm studying fungi. Um, it's just not as glamorous. Um, but there's a ton of diversity out there that we're continuing to document. Worms are another uh, area. This is a marine polychaete. Uh, there's a ton of diversity of worms out in the oceans that we're just beginning to understand. Bacteria, um, there's, we're pretty good at studying the bacteria cause disease, but 60% of bacteria don't cause disease and they live in the soil or out in the ocean and we barely understand their biology. Uh, spiders, people don't always want to study spiders. Even fish um, aren't particularly well studied. Um, there is a researcher at UC Davis who takes uh, trips to the Amazon and heads up different uh, tributaries and every time he heads up a different tributary he finds one or two new species of fish. Uh, he's run out of names and he just lets his graduate students do them now. The deep sea is especially a place that um, just the technology hasn't allowed us to explore until very recently and uh, as we go deeper and deeper we're finding all kinds of new species. <laughs> 